Ian. Yeah. Another super show. Another in television Amico update. Uh, update? Update. What did I say? Update. In television Amico was a uh, proposed console project. Do we really even need to do this? Uh, you know, there could be someone new to the show that finds us by accident on the app. New after we've stopped regular updates who has never heard of the Amico may may drama. Maybe they watched Flea Market Madness and said, I want to click on that Amico news. You know, for oh. years and years, I've never clicked oh. on anything else. It was a, a family console. No multiplayer. Uh, mobile quality no, games. Was all multiplayer. Uh, no online multiplayer. No on, excuse me. Sorry, thank you. Jesus no online Pat. multiplayer. Because it's not, we want to pretend it's 1982 again when the last time in television was relevant in the world. Um, it was going to have six packing games, and um, they raised upwards of 17 million dollars. 17 million via uh, investors and crowdfunding on three different websites and pre-orders uh, for 100 dollars that were supposedly refundable. They were not refundable because a lot of people haven't gotten their refunds, which means de facto they were not refundable. And it was run by a lying con man named Tommy Tallarico, uh, who's now disappeared off the face of the earth since being booted uh, as CEO uh, at this point over a year ago. So that's that's the long and the short of it. In the meantime, uh, two at least of the prototype hands cobbled together systems are in the hands now of a couple of the cultists, uh, people that are in love with Tommy Tallarico, the Intelligent Mico idea. Uh, fanboys of it. So now we at least have an example of a couple of the games uh, that are out there. Uh, we also, uh, Slopes Game Room also, uh, he was not a cultist uh, of this, but he put out a video playing uh, Shark Shark as well. So at least we have more in-depth gameplay of Shark Shark and Cornhole, uh, which which is uh, where we'll start with this. So Ian, were you impressed by Shark Shark, Shark and or Cornhole? I, I no, I was not. Um, cornhole in particular, Shark Shark looked like like what it, it did, what it, it it said on the tin, which shark. is not much. Like you know, I mean, eat fish, get bigger, avoid the shark. Yep. Um, didn't really get me excited, but like I said, it looked like it was doing what it set out to do. Fine. Cornhole, on the other hand, well, looks no, no, like... I, I'm not done with Shark Shark. Oh, go ahead. You, you, well, you said, uh, were you excited by Shark Shark? Okay, well, let me, well, okay let's talk about you Shark You hit Shark. me with the Shark Shark. This game, looking more at the... At, you want to call it the graphic styling? The graphic styling is a mess. There's no uniformity to the art style at all. No. Between the fish, between your player fish, background fish, backgrounds, all different art styles. Yeah. Entirely. The clown I, fish looks like Little Nemo. The other fish, oh, not little Nemo, uh, Nemo from Finding Nemo. The the, the, the background fish look, look look more like real fish, and the background is like a stylized art style. That's you know what I mean. It's all over the place. Um, and then I'm not sure if if the exact number of stages was set in this. I haven't. I don't remember this. I believe these games are all like ten or twelve stages for your single player, which is crazy because I I can't imagine a game like Shark Shark having an end. Like, it should just keep going. And, and getting, like, getting more difficult? Yeah, just get more, yeah, like an but, arcade game. You just but, get higher and higher scores. But between this and skiing, from what we see or know, like, these are very, very short single-player experiences. It was interesting to me that we never saw skiing again because skiing was the only game that I looked at, and while it didn't look like it was anything special, it at least looked, uh, well, not counting... Astros Mesa, a short one too. Sorry, not counting uh, uh, Cloudy Mountain and what's it called? Intruder? Night Stalker. Sure. Um, those were cohesively designed because they were made by someone else. Yes. Skiing was the only one of like the internal and television games that I saw that looked like it had a cohesive art style. From all the Bavarian Grant games? Yeah, it was very, very was, simple. Was that Bavarian Grant? I forget. It was very simple, but it, it looked like looked it, like it, it was... looked cohesive. It looked okay from my memory. And Tommy even talked about having played that one and pl he beat it because I think that was online where someone was like, how many levels it does it have? And he was like 10. Yeah. But then we never heard of it again. Where, where the fuck is skiing? Skiing hasn't popped up like Shark Shark and Cornhole and Astro Smash and all these other yeah. ones have. So so a, a, a few YouTubers have played this. Two in particular got a got a got a console to play on. I, I believe the Slopes Gamer room is not on the console, but I you know, I, like an early Steam version or whatever. Yeah, it's just a digital because these games are going to make their way out to the world of it. <laughs> oh, they've already I, said uh, BBG's yeah. releasing releasing Astro Smash and Shark Shark to mobile phone first. We'll get to BBG. We'll get there. We'll get there. There's a lot to cover. So, so the point Brazilian is, butt guys. <laughs> the point is, it's Ian. These games 
are st- are going to be attached. We're supposed to be attached to a three hundred dollar console, three hundred dollar console, and that's when <laughs> I going back to no one ever argued me on this, especially Tommy when we point out the value proposition of something. Yeah, because there it's was not no the, argument. It's, it's not the base cost that matters. It's how much use you get out of a product or item. Yep, that's what matters in the end. If I get way less use out of a five dollar toaster oven than a sixty dollar Cuisinart, well, the sixty dollar Cuisinart wins out. Yep, that's Absolutely. all. That's all. It, and he knows about his Cuisinarts. Do the people still use Cuisinarts? I forget. They do. Anyway, KitchenAid's a little bit better, but I have some Cuisinart stuff. I think my uh, I think my food processor is Cuisinart. Okay, oh, that's a brand name. I was thinking of like yeah. a food processor. Well, uh, so a Cuisinart is a brand name, but it, it became kind of like a Kleenex or a Lego gotcha. for uh, for a long time for food processors. So. This is what I'm going to say about the, the YouTubers that were given a console from Intellivision Entertainment directly or entrusted with one of the few prototypes for these small YouTube channels, one of which was an use an investor update that we're going to get to. This is, I can't, I use the word insane so much, I can't use it anymore. It means like, nothing. It means nothing anymore when it comes to this. But the fact that this company on its death throes gives out a couple of, what you want to say, they made 10 handheld consoles and controllers to these no-name YouTubers just because they were suck-ups and they were crazy enough not to have or any questions, rational, any, any rational questions. Any negativity. Uh, don't question a dear leader. I can't, it's beyond baffling that this happened. Yeah, man, a, it is. A company <laughs> crazy. that took and blew $17 million, two of the only known prototypes ends up in these YouTubers' hands to do videos on their little channels. It's, I don't know what to say. I, no, no one does. No one does. <laughs> no one knows what to say about um, this. Cornhole was played with one with a, a YouTuber. Yes. And for some reason put their children in there. I'm not going to address that. I think it's a bad idea, though. Uh, because there's people that can leave comments, whatever. The cornhole was broken. Oh yeah, that's what I was getting to. It, it just it, <laughs> it, it looked awful. Like the 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 motion does not match the throws. The motions looked the same almost every time, and we got wildly different uh, throws. At one point in the video, the child throws the the bag like like in golf, you can hook or slice. Slices the throw with their arm, meaning it's going to go to the right. Yeah, it's going to go to the right of the board. In the video, the bag goes to the left of the board. Yep. It did the opposite direction the child was throwing. The physics were fucked. At one point, the I didn't watch all that I skimmed through. You can't. Uh, I can't. It's ridiculous. By the way, the assets don't match on that either. They're ridiculous. Oh, no. They're all over. The bag hits the front of the cornhole board and bounces off forward in the air like a fucking rubber ball. Yeah. Have if you have played cornhole with bean bags, they don't bounce like that because they're bean bags. It flattens. You don't see that happen. It's not going to bounce back forward and off. It will slide off. It will not act like rubber. The physics are fucked on that. The game is broken. It's broken. Yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, they do not act like bean bags. No. And there's obviously not real motion, which we knew that back when Tommy revealed it and his little walk through the walk through the fucking uh, company headquarters video when he revealed it was broken. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was an even earlier worse. Uh, but I don't think it's progressed version. that far past that. It didn't take as it didn't look like it took as many clicks to throw the thing. And that video is like three clicks to throw the thing in the old video. All right, let, let's go through the anyway. Phil Adams, CEO. Let me read. I like to read. You this, can, this, you this can up, cut in. This update came out around the third week of uh, May, <clears throat> about a week and a half ago. <clears throat> It's a lot, a lot of reading going on. We're missing the NBA Finals for this, but we're DVRing it. Oh, it's good to be back. <sighs> you, you running out of your water, Lou? Yeah. The last 18 months since becoming the CEO has been an extremely difficult time for the Intellivision business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I almost choked. A long list of disappointments from both inside, inside and outside. Inside. Yes, that to me seems like a... Admission that you fucked up. And a direct attack at Tommy. Maybe. A long list of disappointments from both the inside and outside of the company had to be taken on. Going back to that, maybe I, I, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but when you put that in the at the top and people know what's been going on, I, I'm sorry, that's impossible for me to read as anything other than an attack at Tommy. Your fault. You should have threw him off the company a year and a half before you did. 
During this time, we laid off a large portion of our staff, restructured our management team, and began the process of reevaluating every aspect of the business, which included the path that lay ahead for Intellivision. Tell me about the path, Bill. Phil. What we have distilled down from countless hours of <laughs> countless hours of self-assessment <laughs> is that we are, or more accurately, wish to be. There it is. There's the secret. Wish. There's the secret. Wish casting in the business of creating a living room experience that brings people of various ages together in group play. There's so many little delicious details in here, like more accurately wish to be admitting that they're not in any sort of business at all. No, they don't, well, they don't have a business right now. We'll get to what the business is in a, in a second. Yep. Uh, anyway, sitting this. Okay. Uh, that we more accurately wish to be in the business of creating a living room experience that brings people of various ages together in group play. Ugh. It is the experience between people sitting in the same room that will be our primary measure of success. This, first and foremost, comes from offering great content. Uh-huh. Mm, okay, sure. Uh, as an entertainment business, we realize that creating great content requires world-class partners, 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 partnerships, and a focus on strategies where we can effectively achieve the necessary level of excellence to succeed. To this end, mm -hmm, now we're getting to the meat. To this end, we will be announcing a string of new partnerships that will not only help bring fun and innovative content that captures the Amico experience, but also bolsters and celebrates our content's appeal by licensing our IP to development partners who have produced who that have product, product pedigrees pedigree. that are creatively aligned and best poised to bring something great to market. Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. Two, leveraging our IP in ways that ensure that ensures delivery on Amico, but additionally expands our content to entirely new audiences and television would otherwise be unable to reach. And three, acquiring new IP that embodies Amico and fits our strategic focus. This will include licensing IP for other platforms where it makes sense to do so. Okay, that's a mouthful. Um, yep. So let's just put it this way. The reason they have half of their library of games was from the Bavarian grant money that went into stuff like uh, Astro Smash, right? Uh, God, biplanes. Skiing. Uh, the fucking Pong game that looked terrible. Yes. Um, what am I, uh, Shark Shark as well? Sh I believe Shark Shark. Uh, yes, yes. Shark and Astro Tank Smash. Tank. I don't think tank. I don't think tank battle was was one of those. Tank uh, tank and shark shark might have been, but there was like five. There's like six or games. I don't know the list in front of me. I'm tired. It's fine. That's where they got the money to have a viable, in theory, an ecosystem to begin with. Let's just have put that out there. They have no money to acquire, acquire new IP. If they don't have money to have people work on the console, there's no money to acquire new IP. What are they going to acquire? They can't get Bubsy. Atari got them already. Like, what are they going to buy? What are they going to buy? They're going to find some other indie games on Steam that you know no one bought. These games are going to try to. There's no money. It, it's funny because uh, you know it, it's you go from a line like what we have distilled down from is that we are or more accurately wish to be like an admittance of we're not doing oh. anything to suddenly talking big about licensing IP, leveraging our IPs. You have. Nothing, and you're going to have a lot less, but we'll get to that in a minute, sure. too. Our, I got to get through this. Our commitment to delivering a unique and innovative platform that brings people together has not wavered. Sure. What has changed, and here it is that no one's ever going to get, like, certain members of the, that cult are never going to get through their thick skulls. What has changed is our philosophy on how to deliver that experience. The business environment is quite different than from what it was in 2018. No, it's not. When it's the original not. Intellivision business plan was put together, it was a horrible idea then, guys. We cannot solely be dependent on a traditional hardware console what? business what? model. What? The system that was promoted as being the only way to experience unique, exclusive games that cannot be done anywhere else is now uh, not, 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 it's not the focus. They cannot solely be dependent on it. The cost and time to scale such a business is too great. Oh, no fucking shit. This would have been nice to know <laughs> before you got millions and upon millions and millions of dollars. And it's like people. this, the cost and time really? to scale such a business is too great. Is not really, that's not a unique nugget of wisdom that they had to deep down really? hard to find. People have been telling them this for years well us and other people okay 
we must be more creative in how we deploy our intended entertainment experience, not only delivering a better experience for our customers, but also reducing the time and cost to scale the business. It's too late. The money's gone, though. Yes. Like, this was something you should have found out in 2020 when you did your first delay and realized, holy shit, or we're after in trouble. When the investor backed out. In 19. When the investor backed out, that's when <laughs> you needed to be like, okay, console's not going to be it. We're going to, you know, develop these games, we'll our publisher. licenses, we're going to be a publisher. Yeah. And that's where it would have been. But Tommy had already stalked all this fucking shit and yes. he could not let it go. Could not. So, um, we want to assure our fans that shipping a console remains a part of our product strategy sure it does sure it does you know uh, it, i was gonna say a joke dorn the development and hands-on testing of our pilot units have been a successful step forward how and how how what did you what have you discovered how 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 you put these videos up on these youtube channels get 300 views to these folks how is that what are, what are you showing because to the few what are you showing because to the few people who are still true believers all they need to hear is say oh they're making steps forward okay Phil said they're moving forward. That's good enough for me. But but you did your 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 events at various locations. You did like four or five of them. Turkey Point. Yeah, Turkey you, Point. You did a bunch of boomers. <laughs> famous famous name. Turkey Point. So I mean, like, like wasn't that supposed to be the proof of concept? But now there's nothing else. You can't do those anymore. Uh, you know, maybe there's not many consoles in house anymore. They have no staff to set them up. All right, go on. We want to assure our fans that shipping a console remains a part of our product. Oh, right, right, right. Um, as a testament of this progress, we are pleased to share with you this video of a father and son playing Shark Shark on one of the pilot units in their home. Again, I'm not saying anything about them. It's just you cannot say that showing someone playing Shark Shark is progress when you have been telling people for years that the games are all buttoned up and ready to go. This is nothing That's not new. Progress. That's been the same show. Shark, shark, and same console quo. for two years, probably. Right, has status been worked, quo. has been worked on for two years, from what we know. As part right. of our expanded strategy, uh, we also plan to bring the Amico experience to other oh, hardware uh, platforms, starting with mobile devices under the name Amico Home. What we said so early on, just make these mobile phone games, put them out as downloadable titles. Put them on Steam, put them elsewhere. The Pat and Ian business model comes to fruition. I, I uh, what's what's the word uh, that people use? I can, uh, c c I can c not collaborate. I, I can, con I'm available for consulting. Super uh, fucking well, cheap. We, we've apparently done consulting for free for years now because yeah. they're, they're using what we've said forever. What I'm not an do? expensive date. You want to ask uh, me some questions about your business? I turn okay. out okay better, more, let, more, let, more let, often than not. Can I focus in on how bad the branding is, first of all? Yes. Amico Home. Mobile devices, home, mobile, mobile devices. The console is a Mika home. That's home. This is not a proper branding name if this is going to be mobile. You have to call, I don't give a shit what you call it, but it's not home. home. Right. That's just dumb on its surface. Sorry. That's, that's frequency. Unless they're admitting that people will sit around in their home and play games on their cell phones together, which was something Tommy said people absolutely do not do. Okay. Next. So. Amico Home. Amico Home will dramatically reduce the hardware footprint needed to enjoy Amico oh games but because you're just announcing you're being a, mo you're a mobile game seller. Um, we'll provide more. Uh, no, no, no. Amico Home will dramatically reduce the hardware okay. footprint needed to enjoy Amico games and provide more developers the opportunity to explore the creative potential of in room multiplayer games with our innovative physical and smartphone controllers. Okay. So it's okay. So they've got their physical controllers. I still want to do those. You know, those are ridiculously over-engineered and expensive. What I'm curious what they mean by smartphone controllers. They just mean like using your smartphone, smartphone. as a controller. Yes. Which is what the app was supposed to do. But, but they were just talking about Amico Home, and now they're talking about using the smartphone as a controller, and the smartphone would be where the screen is. And the the innovative physical <laughs> controllers, we know you can't play games on the screen. So what ah. is he even fucking saying? This, this broadening of the talent pool will broadening. bring new ideas in gaming that will shape the future of Intellivision and our place in the market. No one cared before. No one magically cares now. There are already thousands, if not thousands upon thousands of mobile game developers. Sure. We are excited for this future. <laughs> we are excited to not be in hot water for a little bit longer. We are excited for this future and what it means for bringing the Amico experience to the public. Those who... Oh, God. Oh, God. I forgot about this best one. Those who support... <laughs> 
You want me to read it again? No, those who supported in television early on helped set the foundation for all that oh, we have yeah. been able to achieve. Oh, yeah. And we are truly thankful to you all. Mm-hmm. Thankful for your In cash. the coming weeks, those that have maintained, <laughs> maintained a deposit will be able to sign in and verify their spot on the priority list, Amico Club List. The Amico Club List will be used as the primary mechanism to prioritize access to special products early access to new games and other unique offers more details to follow again we thank you for your patience and support as we chart a new course for Intellivision and establish our own unique position in the vast and vibrant video game industry phil adam ceo holy shit that last oh. line it's just i mean you frame that this is just insane the spin on this those that have maintained a deposit like those that have maintained a deposit as opposed to the people you can't fucking refund because you have no money to refund them. So this is what's going to happen. I, 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 if I'm a betting person and I'm usually right on these predictions, Ian usually is too. Hey, Ducky, I got it. They're going to have you sign in. If you, if you still never got your money back, they're going to have you sign up for this fucking bullshit and they'll put a disclaimer somewhere, a legal disclaimer saying, if you agree to this, you are in, you are not, uh, you have no rights to any refund here or now in the future. Yep. Not that you are anyway, probably from the fucking original, uh, fig, uh, pre-orders by the way, but, fig, fig is gone as a website, by the way. Yeah. So, so there's, there's the that. original pre-order website that you can put on and whatever the bullshit with, with that's gone. That's on the other side. Yeah, um, I, I would read that stuff real quickly because they're definitely going to try to get this debt down as much as they can. And I would not be surprised if they put some sort of weird click wrap on uh, on there that, you know, you have to click through. You know, remember, the original funding was on FIG for this. Yes. Before, before They got the, a line share in Republic, but FIG is where you could pre-order directly. Um, yeah, they were they, FIG joined uh, Republic platform and now re, it now goes to uh, Republic. So the, something's going on with the FIG website. It's, it's gone. It's not just Republic. Um, this is, it's of course, this is a disgrace, this update. After the last update, by the way, before this was, what was it, September before this on Republic? What is that path, man? That's, that's, a, whole, that's a whole pregnancy time, time span of, of before an update. Nine months. Jesus. <laughs> it's a good way to look at it. It's nine months. <sighs> nine full months. Just about. Maybe you had an Amico baby in that time. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong going on in your personal life. We're not going to we're segue into something that Phil brought up. Licensing IP. Pre-existing IP, right? That's one of the things they're going to do to get the, the, the television name out there to keep hope alive of the Amico. That, that's what's going to... The, the little, the, little the, the tiny Intellivision flame will be kept like the Olympic flame gets kept, you know, always... always. <laughs> always on mm-hmm. that that's the argument right well here's the problem um they're they're uh phil is dismantling the the intellivision ip before your very eyes dismantling it um this came out in a press release from bbg entertainment that uh they just bought the rights to publish not on intellivision consoles which will never come out anyway so it doesn't fucking matter they just bought the rights. They already were the devs for Dyna Blaster before, but that wasn't going to yes. be a packing game. They just bought the rights for Astro Smash and Shark Shark, two of the big games that were going to be on the Amico. We're talking packing game shit, right? The ones that were showing off, one in the video. They bought the rights for these two, not just... The modern versions. This is the worst part. No, they own it all. They own the original in television game copyrights and the fucking trademarks to Shark Shark and Astro Smash now. That sold off. Two of the, the better known, and there's not a lot of them. There's like five or six only. Two of the better known, if you want to say better known, in television classic games are now not owned by Intellivision anymore. Uh, Intellivision uh, Entertainment or Holdings, we'll get into that. They're gone. Frank Cifaldi had a good uh, uh, thread about it on Twitter the other day, basically stating that uh, when it comes down, those, those are like two keystones 
in, yes. in the collection. They're not amazing games on their own. I like Astro Smash. Like I it's do fine. like the original Astro Smash. I like I like the I like the, that you lose points if you miss them. So there's that sure. risk reward in play. It's a simple game, um, but they are definitely two of the. Uh, um, Totem, like you know the 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 pillars, the pillars, the pillar games for now the television, more life. To, television well, yeah. games. Maybe you want to say right top ten in television games, whatever. So they don't, they're not really going to sell anything on their own because they're not great games. But when you would sell an Intellivision collection of games, like like the Blue Sky Rangers did with mm-hmm. uh, Intellivision Lives, you know they had the rights to all that. Um, you know, y- seeing those two on there was enough to trigger a memory or something. The Intellivision library as a whole has been greatly cheapened by the loss of those two games. Absolutely. And <coughs> what Frank brought up in the thread, I believe, was that the meaning behind these games takes a huge hit in importance when it's not tied to the platform. Right, exactly. When it's not They're the not, whole... Yeah. Like, Shark Shark on its own, like, if Shark Shark came out today as a game, there's other games like it. Microsoft did one that was big, Feeding Frenzy, I think. If if Astro Smash came out today, you'd be like, oh, this is just a, a fucking clone of 50 other fucking ar- arcade right. games from the early 80s. Who cares? Yeah. The, it only meant something to people because of its association with, with television. Yeah, within That's that it. within that context. That's it. Yeah. Astro Smash means nothing outside of that context. So now the rights for uh, for these games, if Intellivision ever comes out with a future console, they can use these games. That's not happening. That's not happening, though. Yep. And now, uh, to to a person who likes in television, that's going to cheapen the whole experience. So, because that 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 library, that core chunk of games, is no longer together. So, one of the smartest things, and it also, I think they, they said it doesn't affect previous activations, meaning like stuff that already exists, like on the Evercade pack, stuff like right, that. right. But that means like, good luck if you wanted to see like, a, not saying you're going to see the same quality, like a version of the Atari fiftieth, yeah. the Intelligent fiftieth. They'd have to relicense those games out from BBG to get them on there now. They yep. don't have the rights to them to do that for a software release. Yeah, you, and you honestly, fucking that's, that's can probably you fucking, the best way to put it. Can you fucking believe that? Can you believe that? Thank you, Tommy. Thank you for your awful fucking idea. Yeah. You, you, oh, I'm going to save in television. No, you no, just you, you fucking destroyed it. <laughs> you, you, you just, you're storing it piece by piece. This is the press release from BBG uh, out of Munich. It's, it's all Germany. All this stuff. There's all the money swirled around from German taxpayer monies, and now they're, they're, they now own... Do we have to read the whole BBG press release? Oh, it's not so bad. It's not bad. Uh, developer behind the nostalgic entertainment classic games like Boulder Dash is excited to announce the launch of three re- revived legend, legendary games for PCs and modern consoles. Can't do these games anywhere else, Ian. That's what we were told on Twitter from mm-hmm. the CEO. As part of its reimagined summer games lineup, providing cross-platform gaming fun for the whole family on PC... Nintendo Switch and Xbox consoles. The lineup includes remastered, reimagined, remastered versions of the multiplayer Evergreen Dino Blaster, Evergreen, as well as the recently acquired in television 16-bit classics Shark Shark and Astro Smash. So Dino Blaster is interesting to me because Dino Blaster was originally a European port of well, that's, that was a name in Europe of Bomberman. Yeah, they, yeah. They use that name. They weren't allowed to use Bomberman, maybe, but but then they bought the Dino Blaster name, and now they're making their a own, Bomberman ripoff. Their own, yes. It's yeah, not, it's, it's not Bomberman, right? Um, and I think I feel like that's worth bringing up because that could be confusing for European people. We are proud to have Shark Shark and Astro Smash, including the original game ver- uh, game versions and versions for future consoles from Intellivision, now part of our portfolio. They got they own it now. They own two of the two of the most important in television games. You believe that? And to put the nail the nail on it, legal at the end. Astro Smash and Shark Shark are either trademarks or registered trademarks of BBG Entertainment. Not in television anymore. Nope. Keith Robinson is is spitting in his grave. And I and I was privy from uh, a source to what uh, Keith wanted to do. With Intellivision, which I, I told you about, mm-hmm. it was closer to an Atari 50th thing, where like a museum study of, of the games and you can play them. That's what Keith wanted to do. Keith passes away, and Tommy Tallarico, the fucking <coughs> lying vulture, swoops in, gets his hooks in, sweets talks the people that have the rights to Intellivision, and and buys them out enough to be you know the head of all this shit. And this is what you happen. This is what happens now. 
Every year it goes by, this is going to happen more and more. And we don't know where this money is going towards. We don't know. Uh, it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposedly, reportedly, six figures this was worth to this BBG company. Yeah, six figures, I mean. Which is way, way too fucking much, by the way. They're probably just throwing money out just to throw money out. Yeah, but, but if you paid $100,000 for it, because that's technically six figures. Yeah. That's uh, not enough money to do anything. Well, it's way business. too much. You're not making. You're not breaking even. Uh, paying paying sure. fifty grand each for for these two games. You're just no. not. No. But where's this money going? I mean, Philly can go on another vacation somewhere. Uh, Tommy can go do another fucking uh, cruise ship game of backgammon that he reportedly w w was doing somewhere. Where's this money going? It's, is it keeping your television alive, or are you just paying yourself a couple of salaries because there's no money coming in anywhere it's else? It's going into the development of the new Amico Club. <laughs> yes, that's where it's going. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking joke. I don't know. What a fucking joke. Yep. So fucking annoying. Now I'm going to read, there was a, again, German, German article from Games gamesworkshop.de. They got an interview, probably on the, on the tail end of this BBG deal, they got an interview with Phil Adam that I'm going to read. And I'm going to try not to throw up. Can I read this one, Ian? Yeah, that's, this one's all you. We made this decision ahead of time. Yeah, <laughs> This one was for you. Like Solomon's decision. Yeah. Cutting the baby in half. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Phil Adam, the Intellivision Amico's last hope, with the same picture you see from him that's used everywhere. Um, no console without cash. In order for the Intellivision Amico to somehow go into a, ser uh, a, a series of productions, uh, this is a translation that might be bad, CEO Phil Adam relies on a radical change of strategy. In quotes, I am 69 years old. I don't let that distract me. I'm not even reading this. My job is to keep the company alive and deliver very good products to families. All right. By that, Phil Adam means all the suspicion and ridicule that has swept through forums and social media for years and still does on a daily basis. Because Adam is chief executive officer of Intellivision Amico LLC, the U.S. company that has been pursuing the rather ins the rather insane plan. This is a, this is a, a real game site. Yes. Yeah. Rather insane plan since 2018 to enrich the game console market with the Intellivision Mico. Insane plan. Until recently, this console could also be pre-ordered in Germany. For example, at Media Markt and Amazon. Cost a sporty 280 euros. Sporty. Sporty. That must be sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Including pre-installed games and two controllers. The device was originally supposed to be released in fall 2020. Uh, the manager cannot give a specific date even when asked. More on that in a moment. Phil Adam is like Obi-Wan Kenobi in television's last hope. This week, you took the time to layer the most pressing questions that have accumulated over the past few months in a video session with Games Workshop. Well, I don't, I'm going to see this video. Why a German publication of all things? More on that in a moment. <laughs> the most impressive message first. Yes, Intellivision is still widely determined to produce and deliver the promised console at some point. Adam assure, assures the console is production ready. Aha! Alone, there is a lack of the necessary capital for series production. Wasn't that the whole fucking point of the Republic? Yeah, it was the money for production. It's on the rocket ship. <laughs> yep. It's Wait, ready to go. Just needs a little more fuel. Tommy said the, the console and games were ready. Are you fucking serious? Sorry, where was I? Um, there's a lack of necessary capital for ser uh, series production. And because of that, Adam turned the business model on its head. The top priority, collect money somehow. We're going to sell off our IP, the only thing we fucking have. We're going we're gonna to sell the games that were traded from German taxpayer money just, back, back to a German company. I just love the, the fucking gall it takes to sell off like two of your most important properties yeah. and then say, we'll be acquiring new property in yeah. the future. You're yeah. not acquiring shit. Um, and so is often the case this time. He comes into play when the going gets tough, says the game's pioneer. Like in the early 80s when he, when he founded the cult company Spectrum Holobyte, which under adventurous circumstances landed the distribution rights for the PC version of Tetris. Uh, unfortunately, you did not get the console rights which is where the money was actually at, but that's a whole other conversation. Yep. Adam describes his current strategy as survive, then strive. In other words, survive first and move on from there. One of the first acts as Intellivision fire firefighter was to stop running costs and reduce the brutal cash burn rate because they fired everyone over a year ago. That's yep. what they did. It was like late spring of last year. Um, almost the entire workforce was laid off. He closed offices that were often empty anyway during the pandemic. PR and marketing had practically come to a standstill. There's no, no. Uh, count the, the, the YouTuber with 300 subscribers showing off the prototype console. In the meantime, only five people are employed in television. He himself, an expert in finance. What? Uh, expert. A colleague in business development plus a few freelancers and consultants put us on the payroll. Mm -hmm. Phil. Uh, each McDonald's br branch has more staff capacity. That's funny uh, from the article there. 
Howland Television wants to make money in the future. Adam literally cannot afford to ideologically adhere to the 10 original television commandments. That's why he has a Miko license like Shark Shark and Astro Smash sold to Munich-based BBG Entertainment a few months ago. Wow, a few months ago. We're just hearing about it now. Yeah. The trademark rights have also been transferred. That really fucks with me, the fact that they, they bought the trademark as well. Like, that means they can't yeah. make a new one yeah. with that name, too. BBG wants to offer these and other Intellivision games soon on PC, Switch, and Xbox. They're already listed on Steam. I didn't even see that. Uh, so, okay, they're on Steam. There are. There's Steam listings for Shark Shark and Astro Smash and Dino Blaster. There you go. Uh, get in early on those. Um, Adam does not agree with the accusation that this would uh, would turn the silverware into silver. From his point of view, the deal has not changed the brand promise because Shark Shark... Uh, on which Intellivision Media is allowed to offer uh, and company. Now, other platforms would be added what's not to love. Well, there goes the, the purpose for buying your fucking console because they're all supposed to be exclusive games. games. Exactly. That was your business model. Yep. Conversely, Adams expects a marketing effect from these license deals because this would also bring in, in commissions, which in turn would be used to convince investors. Oh, fuck off. Motto, we're still here and we're here to stay. And if, the, and if that succeeds, you can finally produce the consoles. Ideally, there would be enough money to serve more than just the pre-orders. How many... Steam versions of Shark Shark would you possibly have to sell in order to get commissions from BBG in order to produce consoles? Uh, I don't know, uh, 10 million? Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? Yep. Can we get real for a second? Uh, anyway. Uh, as as you can finally produce, because of all the preconditions, uh, if that's the season, you can finally produce consoles. Ideally, there would be enough money to serve more than just pre orders. Yeah, sure. Uh, tax money from Miko Games, stupid German money. Incidentally, it is no coincidence. Okay, I'll skip this. This goes into just uh, Moon Patrol. I don't Pong. think. Okay, here it is. Pong, Moon Patrol, Shark Shark, and Skiing. Uh, also, Snafu and Biplanes. Six games from German taxpayer money. So all the all the ha, ha, most games. most most of the packings. Shark Shark, Skiing, Pong, Moon Patrol, Snafu, <laughs> Biplanes. I thought Astro Smash was on there as well. I guess not. Uh, it's hard to keep track. Uh, I'm watching this Astro Smash video, and I don't think you lose points if uh, the rocks hit the ground. So they they change how it works. I mean, that was the only. I, I gotta check this again because that was the only unique feature. I, I'm, I'll I'll skim the rest of this article, but that's the important bullshit from Phil. Uh, it goes into the target group was families. Critics complain that Intellivision offers a solution for which the appropriate problem has yet to be invented because a Switch delivers family co-op. Yes, get a fucking Switch. Get Clubhouse games. There you go. That's yeah. this, that's the Intellivision Miko experience. Oh, it does. Okay, it does. Price point is terrible. It does. Um, this is this is this is the quote here. Adam does not accept the argument that the price for hardware and accessories is too high. In quotes, some of our critics simply do not understand how expensive it is to produce such controllers. Uh, I mean, we, I mean, maybe, maybe that's true, but that's, that's not an excuse. You shouldn't have fucking tied your ship to these fucking awful controllers that no one wants and don't do anything special. Phil, it's the last thing a consumer wants to hear is the CEO whining, whining. about the production costs of their product. That Sony doesn't not, do this. Microsoft doesn't fucking do this. That is not the consumer's concern nor responsibility. It is your responsibility to have a business plan with that proper priced yeah. consumable products that you know you can sell to a viable audience. Yeah. That's what Nintendo does. That's what Microsoft does. That's what Sony does. And everyone else in the fucking world knows that. If something is too expensive, you do not whine about it. You fix it, it. or you fix it before you get to the point where you're fucking tied to it, like an anchor going down to the depths of the ocean of capitalism, which is what has <laughs> happened. Because your controllers were over-engineered bullshit. You should have had controllers that cost $10 each to produce or $15, not fucking $40, $50. That's your problem, Phil. Yeah. Not ours. You fucking baby. Baby. As a business person, that really fucked with me, that quote. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That's dumb. That's insane. Um, we didn't manage to keep the production costs of the console as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And Corona didn't help here because component prices have skyrocketed. Your fucking fault again. Your fault. You didn't. Analog Duo put out their products. We got we got the fucking uh, Playdate came out. Xbox came out with their stuff. Nintendo came out with more switches. Everyone else came out. Uh, Evercade came out with their new console. Everyone else 
had no problem, Phil. I'm probably missing a few things, right? Yeah, probably. And a long pocket came out. Pocket. Only you were the only one, Phil. Ridiculous. Too expensive. What does Tommy Tallarico actually do? It's a header in the article. Oh. Fucking nothing. Nothing. He wasted your money with an awful vision of a product that was never going to succeed for a viable marketplace, and he fucked off. And does is now does, playing does back. Phil say anything about that? Does he say anything about Tommy? Does Tommy get any mention? It's just it's just a recap of him being uh, okay. awful, him about being the cousin of uh, Aerosmith rocker Stephen Tyler. Really? They bring that up? That's in the article. Uh, Tyler, this is in bold. Tyler Rico's career as an emotionally emotionally flammable in television mascot has also come to a temporary end. At, at this time, at the same time, this prevents Tyler Rico from spending hours working through doubters and mockers and forums, podcasts, and YouTube videos, and, oh. and very quickly and very regularly changing the tone. This this article writer knows what a fucking dumpster fire this is. Obviously, yeah, right. They're, so they, they say uh, it, he is officially out. Is that what he said? It's per temporarily come to an end. I mean, he was kicked out of CEO. We know that, but I just don't think anyone actually, you know, acknowledged really no. acknowledged it. Um, in general, people have no idea what it means to bring a console to the market. In quotes, maybe Tommy. This is in quotes from Phil. Maybe Tommy had two night had two naive ideas about building a horror company. Sure. Like any of us. No, no, no. We're not all thinking about building like a hardware company. company. We know that what? we can't, so we don't. Me too. When I found them, when I found the Spectrum Holobyte, that's that was a, a, a computer no game company, Phil. In the eighties, it's totally different. Yep. As entrepreneurs, we try everything that can actually work, but because we approach it with passion, there is a chance of success. That would be fine if you used your own money. That would be fine if you didn't lie to investors and you didn't lie to people that pre-ordered the console. When we even covered this, that's what we said our coverage was turning. Yeah. When you ask other people for money. Yep. After you said you wanna, numerously, you wouldn't. When you want to you you fuck around and, and talk about, oh, we were whining about how much the console costs or we need more money now. That's fine if you didn't already blow through all this fucking money. Paying yourself ridiculous salaries, paying yourself back loans with interest at ridiculous predatory rates, uh, giving out bad loans to Sadesh and other people. You want to oh do that? Oh, my God, that loan. That's a top 10 moment. You want to fuck around with your own money? We wouldn't have had nearly the amount of, of, of blowback. We wouldn't have cared. We would have laughed at you, yep. but we wouldn't be trying to hold you to, to task like we are now. That's the difference. And, and to finish this off, and Phil Adam doesn't want to gamble away this tiny remaining chance so easily. It's fucked. There's no chance. You don't have a tiny remaining That's chance. That's why he will do everything to make the impossible possible and deliver a game console. As a first step, pre-orders who remain loyal to Intellivision, regardless of all trust and deposit advances, are to be included in an Amico club and benefit from unspecified rewards because, in quotes, we are still there because of them. What do the investors get on Republic? What do they get? Did they get into a club? No. Where's that old lady in her Probably poodles? Not. What was that old lady's name with her poodles? A I nice can't old remember. lady. What, what does she get? Holly. Holly and her Holly. poodles. What happens to Holly? Does she get put in a club? A dumb investors club? Poor Holly. I feel bad. She didn't know any better. Yeah, she didn't. Just insane. There, I can't use that word anymore. It, it's it, not. Yeah. It doesn't mean can't. Well, insane synonym. Insane. Any final thoughts, Ian? I just. No, I, I mean I don't. I, I, my my main stuff was going through, uh, you know, his 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 original announcement. Um, deranged, uh, certifiable, psychotic. It's deranged. It's deranged. Deranged is a good one. Uh, no, it's just I, you know, I honestly initially when I read it, I didn't even really want to cover it because to me it was just more kicking the can, uh, which is what Phil has done forever. They just keep kicking the can. But going over it and reading it again last night and there a couple nights ago, and then talking about it here, it really just. It brings out some of the subtleties in the wood grain when you go wood through. Grain. When you, it, it, it's like varnishing a piece of nice wood going sure. through and, and just really reading every sentence out loud, letting those words form and fall out of your mouth <laughs> as your brain goes, why am I saying insane shit that doesn't make deranged any sense? Stuff. Deranged stuff. Um, so, no, I, I don't have more to say. It's insane to me that some people, deranged to me that some people still think <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> that this is coming out. Uh, yeah. I feel bad again for those older Intellivision fans that now know that, hey, guess what? Intellivision doesn't own the rights to those uh, two games anymore. I do. I feel bad. 
I, I, I do legitimately fucking, feel it, bad for that because so many ridiculous. people, so many people, there was a small but diehard group, and I understand small but diehard groups of anything that really enjoyed the Intellivision, and they really worked together to keep that all together. Imagine I mean, developers too; it wasn't just fans; it was yeah, developers. Home, the home, they have a homebrew well, community. Well, no, but actually, the actual developers too. Like it was, oh, sure. it was all the people. You know, imagine we give Tommy Atari. fucked it up. Well, now Phil is. Well, actually, show. Phil yeah. fucked it up. But Phil, Phil just—I'm uh, not saying Phil's pocketing this money, but hey, Phil's still on a salary. He's an employee. Yep. Right? Yep. Am I wrong, Phil? Correct me if I'm wrong, Phil, because Tommy won't say anything. He's too scared to say anything publicly at this point. He hasn't said anything publicly in over a year. Um, we give sh uh, Atari shit all the time. Atari never sunk to these depths. No, they never. They never sold. What's the expression? Selling the uh, at the cow. But you're basically selling, push, putting the cart before the horse. No, but you're selling the cow when you can get the milk for free. No, that's a sexual connotation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't remember. They're selling the farm. Is that uh, it? Selling the farm. Yeah, selling the farm. I guess. They're I. They're all in television is at this point is the game IPs. If Atari went insane and said we're going to sell adventure, we're going to sell centipede and asteroids. You think, well, then what the hell do you have left at some point? Yeah, well, then why, you have nothing left but a name. Why? Why keep? All of it. Why keep any of it? Yeah, if you've yeah. So like, I'm not saying they're gonna then sell. Uh, what do they got? What they have left? Uh, fr frogs and flies, and uh, microsurgeon. No, that's not them. That's iMagic. Oh, they don't own that. Oh, okay. See, you're already at, you're already running out of games. Yeah. So I was wrong earlier when I said that Atari buying the iMagic games was. Oh no, I said M. M Magic, M Net, M M Network, M Network, which was in television. And then I Magic, and you're right, yeah, I Magic, yeah, I Magic was, was it was a publisher. You're right. They did yeah. like Beauty and the Beast and the Silver Games. I think they did Star Voyager as well. Uh, maybe, but the point is that we're already running out of games. You get rid of two of like the big uh, five or six. Yep. There. And if I had if I had to predict, if I was a betting man, because I really think BBG grossly overpaid for these games. If you told me these games were worth. 15,000 each, both versions, I would say that's too much money. Yeah, but 50,000 each is deranged. Deranged. Or let's just say they don't care about money. They want to they buy IPs up to try to release them. You're not going to break even, BBG, on this. You're not. No. What's to say Phil won't do this again next month and get rid of more of the back catalog? Well, and I feel like that's probably what is going to happen is he's just going to piecemeal off this back catalog until, I, I don't know. What do you have left? That's not generic like skiing or boxing. You got um, uh, Frog Bog. Do they own that? Armor Battle. Snafu. Do they even snafu. own that. But uh, Snafu has been cloned and duplicated many times. Astro Smash. That's gone. Uh, Space Battle. No one cares. Space Hawk. Star Strike. We brought that before. Which they're not in the same category. You're, I'm, you're already running out of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're already running out. Roulette's not gonna the the the, the gambling stuff. No one cares about. <laughs> no one cares about B seventeen bomber. Besides it being a meme, you don't own the rights to Tron. You couldn't come back back out with that if you wanted to because nope. you don't own the Tron trademark. Um, everything else is third party stuff like Burger Time and Bump and Jump. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. You don't own the iMagic games. Microsurgeon, Ice Trek, Dracula, Demon Attack, Beauty and the Beast, Atlantis. You don't own that. You're done. That I mean, that's it. That's there's, it. There's nothing left. All right. Well, 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 I guess we'll have an update at Super Show number three when they sell off more games for $50,000 <laughs> each. Oh, shit. What yeah. a catastrophe. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually see it going on this road where they're going to piecemeal out all the games. No, I didn't either. It's fucking pathetic. I, I figured they would have sold uh, everything off, but to piecemeal it out to continue this weird fucking charade. idea that anything charade. is going to come on, that's all it is. It's a shrot. And piecemealing him out is going to let him live that. So.